welcome students this is a third lecture on welding and uh, this lecture is based on the brazing soldering and uh, brace welding techniques uh, this uh, lecture covers the following aspects like need of brazing soldering and brace welding the principal materials methods and application of the brazing pre, uh, principal materials methods and applications of uh, uh, the soldering principal materials and applications of brace welding advantages and limitations of these processes uh, for producing the joint uh, the need of these techniques uh, is due to certain specific reason uh, and because of which uh, these processes were developed uh, and the main reason is inability of the conventional welding processes to produce the sound joint and that inability of the conventional welding processes to produce the sound joint is because of uh, the following factors like uh, the metallurgical incompatibility. Uh, it is uh, practically difficult to weld uh, the metal combinations like aluminum and steel using the conventional welding techniques because of high uh, reactivity of the aluminum and a significant difference in the melting point of the two metals. Uh, in addition to uh, the melting point uh, high difference in thermal uh, expansion coefficient of the two metals also imposes significant problems in welding of um, the aluminum and steel. So, uh, the metallurgical incompatibility uh, is uh, one of the main reason because of which uh, it becomes difficult to produce sound joints by the conventional uh, welding techniques. The another point is uh, cracking uh, the metals like cast irons, uh, high carbon steels and other hardenable steels. Uh, during the welding uh, high uh, residual tensile stresses are uh, developed and if the material in the weld metal or in the heat affected zone is hard and brittle and having very poor ductility then it uh, shows tendency for cracking and uh, the materials like uh, cast iron which is very hard and uh, brittle and uh, the high carbon steels and uh, hardenable steels which develop uh, very hard and brittle HAZ shows the cracking tendencies and if cracks are developed either in weld metal or in heat affected zone then joint becomes useless and, and because of uh, this cracking tendency of the hardenable ferrous materials particularly uh, it is required to use uh, uh, the, uh, the soldering, brazing or uh, the brace welding kind of processes where load uh, during the service uh, will not be significantly high. Uh, the sensitivity to high temperature, uh, the many metals like aluminum gets oxidized rapidly at a high temperature uh, and uh, the metals like uh, steels. Uh, hardenable steels uh, subjected to uh, weld thermal cycle and uh, that weld thermal cycle leads to the hardening uh, of the heat affected zone. So, that hardening uh, and softening in some of the cases is observed in the heat affected zone which leads to uh, the non-uniformities in mechanical properties of uh, the steel weld joints or, or of aluminum alloys. So, uh, the another factor is that, uh, is that uh, like entire different combinations if to be welded then conventional welding techniques also fail to produce the sound joint. For example, the glass, glass is to be welded with aluminum such a different nature of uh, the materials are very difficult to uh, weld uh, by the conventional welding techniques. So, for producing the joint which can perform successfully uh, for the different applications under somewhat lower load and the lower temperature conditions 
this uh, the brazing soldering or braze welding techniques are found useful. The role of the uh, brazing weldering uh, soldering and braze welding is significant in producing um, the sound joints for the difficult to weld metals as described above. Uh, these welding processes are found useful because a very low heat input is used for producing the joint. Uh, base metal is not allowed to melt and very little amount of the heat is supplied um, to the base metal for producing the joint. So, that uh, uh, the high heat input uh, related adverse effects are not uh, produced in, in the base metal like residual stresses or distortion. Uh, the no melting of the base metal takes place uh, in, in these process. This is a major advantage uh, particularly when joining the metallurgically incompatible materials like uh, aluminum and glass or aluminum and uh, steel. Uh, the ability to weld any combination of the metal and non-metal, uh, this is possible only because of uh, because no melting of the base metal is required for producing the joint uh, by these processes brazing soldering and uh, the braze welding techniques uh, you'll see uh, that uh, how what is the brazing and the soldering uh, the brazing and the soldering are the joining processes in which base metal does not melt only filler metal melts and the same is used to fill uh, the joint gap uh, by the capillary action. Uh, we will see uh, here in both these processes base metal is heated to a temperature below the melting point of the base metal and above the melting point of the filler metals uh, and that molten filler metal is used to fill the gap between the parts which are to be joined by and, and this filling of uh, the gap takes place uh, by the capillary action. Uh, one typical application of the brazing can be seen in, in, in joining of the parts in car body by the brazing here this is the brazed uh, joint uh, used uh, which has been used to join these two components. The same way soldering also can be seen here uh, the, the tube uh, pieces are being joined by uh, uh, the soldering process here. Uh, this uh, is particularly uh, 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 this uh, process produces the joint which is somewhat uh, of lower strength than the than that is produced by brazing. So, uh, the uh, comparison of the brazed, soldered and the welded joints uh, uh, is, is like this here. The strength of uh, uh, the uh, joint which is produced by the brazing, soldering and the braze uh, welding becomes different and uh, that difference is because of uh, the mechanisms which are responsible for uh, producing the joint and the difference in the filler metal which is uh, uh, used to produce the joints in, in these processes. The strength of uh, the uh, brazed joint is generally found higher than the strength of the soldered joint because uh, soldered solder uh, material or solder filler metal uh, becomes of the lower strength compa compared to the, uh, the filler metal which is used in brazing process. In brazing process, mainly copper base alloys, uh, copper base alloys are used, uh, while um, the solders are used for producing the soldered joints. Uh, well, uh, uh, the strength of uh, the braze welded joints becomes somewhere in between the joints produced by only welding and that uh, produced by the brazing. So we can say that uh, uh, that uh, the, the strength of the braze welded joints becomes in between the welding and uh, the braze, uh, brazed joints. Uh, because strength helps to uh, 
decide strength of a joint produced by either braced joint or soldered joint or uh, uh, braced welded joint uh, helps to decide that which process will be more suitable for a given application. Now, one by one we will see the principles and uh, the methods and materials which are uh, used in uh, these uh, 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 joining techniques. We start with the brazing one. The brazing uh, joins the materials by heating them in presence of the filler metal. The, the base materials which are to be joined are heated uh, by the external heat source and uh, then filler metal is, uh, is brought in, in contact of the hot base material uh, portion. Uh, filler metal uh, which are which is used for brazing operation generally uh, has the liquidus temperature uh, more than 450 degree centigrade and below the solidus temperature of the base metal. Uh, liquidus uh, uh, temperature is the temperature above which uh, uh, the whole of the uh, metal or the alloy becomes uh, in, it comes in the liquid state and uh, the solidus uh, uh, temperature is the temperature below which uh, the whole of the uh, alloy or the metal uh, comes in the solid state. So, the solidus uh, temperature of the base metal uh, means uh, the no melting of the base metal below that particular temperature. The brazing uh, is different from the braze welding process in uh, because in, in, in brazing uh, we use capillary action to fill the gap between the parts to be joined while uh, in, in uh, braze welding uh, that capillary action is not used for uh, filling the groove between the parts to be uh, joined. Uh, although filler metals may be same in both the cases and uh, the temperature uh, uh, the melting point of uh, the filler metal is in general greater than the 450 degree centigrade and below the solidus temperature of the base metal. However, in braze welding uh, melting of the base metal uh, may take place or may not take place, but uh, in brazing uh, melting of the base metal and uh, does not take place. And now, we will see the basic principle of the brazing and the soldering operation using these schematic diagrams. Uh, the two components to be joined uh, here are heated using the external heat source. Heat source may be in the some furnace or uh, gas flame or any other heat source can be used uh, for heating and the components to be joined and then filler metal is, uh, is uh, brought in contact of the, the metal pieces to be joined. Uh, as uh, and when filler metal is brought in contact uh, this, uh, this melts and it is sucked in by the capillary action in the gap between the two pieces to be joined. So, here the two pieces in joint condition where uh, the filler metal has filled the gap between uh, the two uh, plates uh, ultimately leads to the joining of the two plates. So, here this filler metal has melted and filled this gap uh, in, in this jo joint which has been produced by either brazing or soldering. Schematically we can see for for effective and uniform distribution of the filler metal, it is necessary that uh, the surfaces are cleaned and free from the impurities. And uh, for that, uh, proper fluxes are applied, uh, which helps to increase the uh, fluidity of the molten uh, filler metal uh, and, uh, uh, dis and helps in uniform distribution of the filler metal between the gap by capillary action. Uh, this heat source can be seen and this is the filler metal. Uh, the important points related to the brazing are 
uh, like the melting point of the filler metal which is used is normally above 450 degree centigrade and uh, the, the metal filler metal in molten condition is sucked in between the pieces to be joined by the capillary action. And uh, another important feature of the brazing process is uh, that the no melting of the base material takes place. This is a very important point and because of uh, uh, this only uh, the brazing process uh, has so many advantages related to the low heat input and uh, it does not create problems related to the metallurgical incompatibility. Use of these uh, joining processes is, uh, uh, is uh, carried out. Uh, or these processes are used in number of engineering applications, uh, particularly uh, where uh, the conditions are very different, metallurgical compatibility of the materials to be joined creates problem and the conditions under which these uh, processes are, are normally used are like joining of the metals having entirely different physical characteristics. Uh, like uh, the very high melting point of the one base metal and the low melting point of the another base metal like aluminum and steel very low expansion coefficient of one metal and the high expansion coefficient of the another metal uh, uh, also creates problems. So, the materials having the entirely different kind of the physical characteristics can be successfully welded by these welding processes because it these processes use very low heat input and no melting of the base metals takes place. The joining of the metals of the poor weldability in fusion welding. Uh, joining of the many metals by fusion welding process becomes difficult because of uh, uh, the hardening of the heat affected zone cracking tendency porosity formation. Uh, so, uh, the poor that poor weldability by the fusion welding processes uh, leads to um, create so many problems in joining of uh, the sum of the metals which are hardenable or which are more reactive to the environmental gases. So, these, pro these metals which are difficult to weld by the fusion welding processes can be successfully welded uh, by Mm, by these uh, brazing soldering or braze welding techniques. Heat affected zone is not acceptable many times uh, uh, either very hard or very soft heat affected zone is produced after the welding uh, due to the weld thermal cycle experienced by the weld metal uh, and, uh, very, uh, and the base metal uh, near the fusion boundary and that weld thermal cycle leads to um, the hardening uh, in, in the hardenable uh, metals, hardenable steels and the cast irons and uh, the softening in aluminum alloys and uh, so this variation in, in mechanical properties particularly in heat affected zone if uh, is not acceptable then these processes are found useful. Uh, the location of uh, the joint does not allow to use the conventional techniques. Many times access of the, uh, the joint uh, becomes difficult uh, uh, or access of the plates to be joined becomes difficult uh, to weld by or join by the conventional techniques. Under those conditions uh, these processes also found useful to produce the joint. Uh, the, if the service conditions are not very severe, uh, then um, this process can be used effectively to produce the joints of the entirely different physical characteristic materials. Uh, but these processes uh, are successful particularly under the conditions when loading conditions are not severe and uh, that the service environment temperature is also limited uh, generally below uh, to uh, 50 degree centigrade because these uh, the filler metal which is used to produce 
the joints in these processes uh, generally has uh, the low melting point and uh, that is why uh, the filler metal is not able to withstand at a high temperature conditions and uh, that is why uh, the joints produced uh, by these processes are uh, uh, quite good enough for uh, the low temperature service conditions and the low stress conditions. Uh, typical uses of uh, the gas brazing can be seen uh, in this diagram where uh, in gas brazing oxyacetylene flame is used for heating of the base metal and then uh, melting of the filler metal by bringing the filler metal in contact of the, the pieces to be joined. So, here uh, this, uh, this typical diagram shows uh, the brazing operation by using the oxyacetylene flame. The joint design is a very important aspect for producing a successful joint in, in the brazing and the soldering operations because even your method is perfect, but that the joint has not been designed properly. Uh, that then the distribution of the filler metal between the plates to be joined uh, will not be uniform and that in turn can lead can uh, lead to the un non uniform distribution of the filler metal and so the poor uh, strength of the joint uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, generally the lap joint is used for producing uh, the joint in in the brazing and the soldering operations uh, and uh, in, in the lap joints, the gap between uh, the parts to be joined, which is known as clearance, uh, plays a, a very important role in, 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 in obtaining the uniform distribution of the filler metal. And the uniform distribution of the filler metal between uh, the plates to be joined uh, or in the gap. Uh, depends on, on that how successfully capillary action is achieved. If uh, the clearance uh, significantly affects the capillary action and therefore, the distribution of the filler metal. There has to be an optimum level of the clearance for uh, a perfect capillary action and obtaining the uniform distribution of the filler metal. If the distribution is not uniform, then uh, the strength of the joint is reduced significantly. We can see here example that uh, the, 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 the plate A is to be joined with plate B in uh, and this type typical arrangement shows the lap joint and the gap between the two is known as clearance. This gap has to be an optimum one not very close and not very open uh, because it uh, finally affects to the capillary action and in turn the distribution of the molten filler metal. The effect of clearance on the capillary action can be can be seen using these diagrams uh, because capillary ac uh, action uh, significantly governed by uh, the clearance. So, the clearance has to be maintained properly. Uh, the too less clearance or too much clearance uh, both are uh, uh, undesirable from the capillary action point of view uh, as both uh, 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 either too less clearance or too uh, much clearance reduce the drying or sucking capability uh, of the liquid metal by capillary action between the fang surfaces. And that is why there has to be an optimum uh, clearance uh, depending upon the temperature uh, of the um, filler metal or the type of the filler metal which is being used. Because fluidity of the filler metal um, plays significant role in, in, in effective sucking of the liquid metal by uh, capillary action between the fang surfaces. You can see here the two plates to be joined are having very close gap and this is another case where the two plates to be joined are having very large gap means clearance is very 
uh, less and clearance is more. In both these cases that sucking by capillary action will not be that effective which is required for uh, uh, uniform distribution of the filler metal between the fang surfaces. That is why it has to be an optimum one which uh, uh, because of the surface tension force generates enough drying uh, capabilities uh, in the liquid metal so that it is sucked by the capillary action between the fang surfaces and uh, result in uniform uh, distribution and good strength of the joint. Uh, an optimum range of the clearance um, varies from 0 0.02 to 0.25 mm. Uh, this is uh, the, the, there is a range of the clearance because uh, that fluidity for uniform distribution of the filler metal is governed by the temperature and the type of filler metal which is being used. Uh, in addition to that the, the, the fluxes which are being used and the cleanliness of the fang surfaces also affects the fluidity. So, uh, the optimum clearance in this range uh, will be governed by the so many dynamic conditions which are uh, taking place uh, during the, the brazing or soldering process. Uh, the, uh, as I have said that for effective capillary action and to have the uniform distribution of the filler uh, metal, it is necessary that, uh, uh, the, the, that the, um, uh, the surfaces are cleaned and uh, free from the impurities uh, and uh, to remove these impurities and obtain good capillary action, uh, it is uh, required to use fluxes. There are many other factors um, which also force to use the fluxes like, uh, like uh, the, uh, if the surface uh, is contaminated with the impurities uh, and if the oxides are present at the surface, uh, the presence of oil or grease uh, ox oxides uh, have been formed uh, at the surface of the base metal oxidation of the filler metal and uh, the fluidity uh, of the molten filler wire. Uh, it is always desired to have the glued fluidity of the molten filler wire, so that uniform distribution of the filler uh, metal uh, uh, between the fang surfaces can be obtained and uh, oxidation of uh, that uh, the molten filler metal is also to be uh, uh, should also be avoided to to produce the sound joint and oxidation of the base metal due to the heating um, by the external heat source uh, should be avoided to have the sound joint and the grease oxides and surface contaminants should also be removed and to uh, remove um, uh, these uh, impurities present at the surface and to avoid the oxidation of uh, the, uh, the filler metal and the base metal and to have the better fluidity, the fluxes are uh, frequently used for uh, brazing and the soldering operations. Uh, the role of the fluxes in, uh, in brazing is very important uh, as it uh, performs the number of functions. Uh, the fluxes are normally used to remove the impurities present at the surface and uh, prevent uh, the oxidation of uh, the base metal uh, and the filler metal and improve the fluidity of uh, the molten filler metal so as to get the better capillary action and uniform distribution of uh, the molten filler metal in the, in the gap between the components to it. Uh, the first point is say it dissolves the oxides means uh, fluxes dissolve oxides from the fang surfaces and thereby oxides are removed present the present at the surface. And the removal of the oxides present at the surface helps to improve the fluidity uh, of the molten filler metal. Uh, 
uh, reduce surface tension of the molten metal so as to increase the wetting action and the spreadability. Uh, 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 so, this is another uh, important role play, played by um, the fluxes uh, which helps to uh, reduce the surface tension of the uh, uh, molten filler metal and which in turn reduction uh, which in turn le leads to improved spreadability and the wetting action. Wetting action is important for uh, better flow of uh, the molten metal between the plates to be joined. Another important point is uh, that protect the base metal and the molten metal from uh, uh, the oxidation during the joining process because most of the metals tend to oxidize at a high temperature. So, if the fluxes are used properly then they will help to uh, reduce the oxidation of the base metal and uh, um, the molten metal and that of molten metal. Uh, there are uh, various uh, uh, types of the fluxes uh, which are used uh, in brazing operation to perform uh, above mentioned functions like borax and boric acids are the two common types of the fluxes which are used for brazing by the copper base alloys as a filler metals. And these fluxes are generally used in form of the paste liquid solutions which can be applied easily at the desired locations so as to get the desired effect. Uh, from the fluxes that is related to the protection of the uh, base metal and molten metal from the oxidation and uh, the improved fluidity uh, of the molten metal and uh, um, uh, removal of the impurities present at the surface. The brazing filler metals, uh, various types of the brazing filler metals are used. The copper base alloys are the most common one. The most commonly used filler metals uh, for the brazing is the copper uh, based zinc alloys which are known as brass. Uh, it generally consists 50 to 60 percent of copper, 40, approximately 40 percent of the zinc, 1 percent nickel, 0.7 percent Fe and the same amount of uh, the silicon and manganese. Um, this kind of alloy is also known as a spelter which is used for the uh, brazing operations. Nickel sometimes is used to um, increase the high temperature properties, particularly high temperature strength of uh, the brazed joint. And the nickel can be added up to the 10 percent to uh, attain these specific properties. The common uh, brazing materials are uh, like uh, in addition to the copper base alloys, the silver brazing filler metals are also used which contains 30 to 50 percent of the silver, 30, uh, 15 to 35 percent of the copper, 15 to 28 percent of zinc, 18 to 24 percent of cadmium, 2 to 3 percent of nickel and 5 percent tin. Uh, the copper uh, base uh, filler metals are, uh, are found in form of uh, uh, the rods, strips and wires while uh, the silver base uh, uh, filler metals are found in form of powders also in addition to the wire strips and the rod forms. The brazing filler metals along with their applications and brazing temperatures uh, are shown below and uh, depending upon the kind of uh, the uh, filler metal to be used uh, uh, depending upon the kind of application like uh, the base metals to be joined different filler metals are found suitable and for the different uh, uh, filler metals the different brazing temperatures are also used which can produce the joint successfully. Like uh, uh, for uh, aluminum silicon filler metals, the brazing temperature is 600 degree centigrade and this aluminum silicon uh, filler metal 
is used for joining the aluminum uh, plates by brazing uh, for nickel and copper uh, base metals and uh, nickel and copper base alloys brazing temperature is 1120 degree centigrade and uh, for that copper uh, base filler metals are used copper phosphorus base filler metals are used uh, for the brazing of the copper and the uh, brazing temperature is 850 degree centigrade. Uh, some other combinations, uh, uh, some other filler metals and their applications are like copper zinc filler metal for this brazing filler, uh, uh, brazing temperature is 950 degree centigrade and it is used for joining of the steel, uh, cast irons and nickel base alloys. And the uh, AU and AG silver and gold uh, combination filler metals um, for brazing purpose are used uh, by using the brazing temperature of 950 degree centigrade and it is used for uh, producing the joints, brazed joints of stainless steel and nickel alloys. For stainless steel and nickel alloys also nickel copper based filler metals are also used and uh, brazing temperature for that 11 20 degree centigrade uh, is uh, preferred. Uh, there are many methods which are used for producing the brazed joints and uh, the difference in these uh, brazing methods uh, mainly lies in, in the way by which heat is uh, developed and applied uh, in, in the components to be joined by the brazing process. These brazing uh, methods are like in torch brazing, oxious clean uh, torch is used for heating of the base metals. In a deep brazing, salt bath or molten metal bath is used for, for heating of the base metals. In furnace brazing, uh, the electrically uh, heated uh, the furnace is used for uh, heating the components to be braced in pre-assembled condition. Infrared radiations are used for heating the joints to be, uh, heating the components to be joined by uh, infrared brazing method and induction brazing means uh, uh, induced current is developed um, at the uh, uh, surfaces of the components to be joined by brazing in induction brazing so that the melting of the pre-placed filler metal takes place. Uh, the brazing methods uh, in detail we will discuss like uh, that uh, we will start with the torch brazing. In the torch brazing as I have just told you that oxygen flame uh, is used for heating of the, the base metals to be joined by uh, brazing. And for this purpose, either neutral flame or reducing flame can be used so that oxidation of the base metals is avoided and the surfaces uh, are remain free from uh, the oxides and other impurities. Uh, the filler metals uh, uh, may be uh, either pre-placed in form of uh, the washers, rings, strips, powders or may be fed manually in form of the rods. So, depending upon the kind of uh, the components to be joined, uh, the suitable filler metal either in powder form, strip form or ring form can be either pre-placed or it can be applied uh, with the help of uh, the rod form of the filler metal. For example, uh, the, the two plates to be joined will be heated by the gas flame to a temperature, suitable temperature uh, depending upon the kind of filler metal to be used and then filler metal is applied here. In, in the torch brazing, uh, this uh, shows the typical way of uh, producing the brazed joint by the torch brazing. This is the oxygen flame torch which is being used to heat the, the surfaces to be, uh, surfaces of the component to be joined and this is what is the filler material is being applied at the uh, area where joint is to be uh, produced. 
in in a deep brazing uh, uh, the heat is applied at the feng surfaces um, with the help of uh, uh, salt bath or uh, with the help of the molten metal bath uh, the base metal uh, with the pre placed filler metal at the joint is dipped in in the uh, salt uh, molten bath and uh, which uh, transfers the heat required for uh, heating the uh, base metal and uh, the uh, that heat leads to the melting of the pre placed filler metal so salt bath acts as a heat source as well as flux for the brazing operation pre placed filler metal uh, melts because of the heat uh, transferred by the salt bath and that uh, the molten filler metal fills the joint uh, fills the gap to produce the joint um, alternatively the assembled components can also be dipped in the molten uh, metal bath so that uh, in that case there is no need to uh, provide the pre placed filler metal but the molten uh, metal from the bath enters in between the fang surfaces to produce the joint and uh, the molten metal in the bath fills the joint dip brazing method can be seen here with the help of this diagram here uh, this, these are the two components to be joined in pre placed condition and the uh, and this is the molten uh, salt bath and uh, it, it 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 is uh, uh, it is uh, heated using uh, the suitable uh, electrical heating system and uh, the the pre placed pre assembled uh, the components are dipped in the bath so that it gets the heat desired and leads to the melting of the pre placed filler metal to produce the joint in the furnace brazing uh, furnace brazing also the uh, pre assembled uh, parts to be joined are passed through the uh, furnace uh, here the filler metal is pre placed uh, between the parts to be joined and then it is passed through the electrically heated furnace um, where melting of the filler and filling of uh, filler metal and the filling of the gap takes place to produce the joint uh, many times to avoid the oxidation of uh, the feng surfaces uh, the controlled atmosphere is also developed in the furnace by using either argon or helium uh, so uh, this is particularly used in case of the reactive metal components uh, brazing the schematically we can see that how furnace brazing works here uh, this is uh, the the furnace uh, where a high temperature is maintained and control this is conveyor the pre placed components uh, pre assembled components with the the filler metal and fluxes are placed like this and then this entire assembly is passed through the uh, furnace and the, in the furnace the fluxes melts filler metal also melts they perform their functions and by the capillary action things are uh, the gap is filled and by the molten metal and at the end we get uh, the brazed joint here so the pre placed uh, uh, the pre assembled the uh, components with the desired amount of the fluxes and filler metal are passed through the furnace to produce the joint this is very quick method but needs proper automation for high production rates typical fixtures which are used for the brazing operations uh, can be like this where the two components to be joined uh, are pre placed with the uh, the filler metal ring and this entire assembly can be passed through the electrically heated furnace in the same way 
here the pre placed blazing uh, material and uh, the uh, filling of the joint can be seen in, in this diagram. Uh, this is your pre placed filler metal and uh, after brazing it fills this uh, after passing through the furnace it, 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 it fills this gap to produce the joint. Another brazing method is the infrared brazing where uh, desire, heat desired for producing the brazed joint is generated from the infrared radiations. These radiations are focused in, in, in the areas where heat is to be generated using the uh, optical lenses and then uh, the, the pre placed filler metal uh, is melted uh, and to produce the joint. And, uh, this uh, operation can be uh, carried out in, in either controlled atmosphere or in the vacuum conditions to avoid the contamination of the joint from the atmospheric gases. Uh, the schematic diagram below shows the infrared brazing uh, process here. Uh, from these uh, sources, uh, from these areas, will uh, lamps will be getting the infrared radiations, and this is, these are the components to be joined with the filler metal. And desired heat is these radiations are focused at uh, this in in this area, so that heat is um, generated to uh, melt the filler metal and produce the braised joint. In induction uh, brazing is the another brazing method uh, which uh, in which uh, um, high frequency current is used to to uh, develop the heat in the area uh, where joint is to be produced and um, the frequency of the current which is used for uh, uh, producing the heat uh, varies from 5 to 400 kilohertz. Uh, the frequency of the current which is being used to induce the current for brazing purpose significantly affects the depth up to which heat is generated. Normally low frequency is used for generating the high uh, heat for generating the heat up to the greater depth. Uh, the fluxes in this process may be used or may not be used depending upon the kind of the metal combinations being joined or the filler metals being used. The principle of the soldering process is, uh, is largely similar to that of uh, the brazing process only difference is there in um, the, the filler metal which is used for the soldering operation. In this process the lab joint is produced between the two seats by filling the low melting point material which is called shoulder and the shoulder is basically an alloy of the lead in tin. The gap between the seats to be joined is controlled very closely to get the benefit of the capillary action and it, this gap varies in uh, from 0 0.075 to 0 0.125 mm uh, and because this capillary action is very important for uniform distribution of the filler metal between the plates being joined. Uh, to ensure uh, that a sound joint uh, is created, it is necessary to ensure that a good intermetallic bonding between the uh, seats takes place and uh, for this purpose both surfaces must be free from the impurities. The, the, the spreadability is very important for uh, producing the sound joint in, in the soldering because if the spreadability is poor then distribution of the filler metal between the fang surfaces will not be uniform and this uh, spreadability is significantly governed by the number of factors like fluidity. High fluidity helps to improve the spreadability, vapor pressures that will help to push the, the metal in, in, in the gaps where it is required, the gravity, the uh, gravity will affect the spreadability depending upon the location where joint is being produced, the metallurgical interaction between the base metal and filler metal. Like uh, higher alloying uh, uh, ability of uh, the solder and the base metal leads to the reduced spreadability and uh, 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 if they form some uh, sort of uh, um, uh, the intermetallics 
then that also uh, uh, reduces um, the spreadability. So, the level of hollowing between the filler metal and the base metal affects the spreadability. The strength of the joint um, as I have told that uh, significantly governed by the spreadability uniform distribution and the filler metal which is being used for producing the joint. Uh, the joint which uh, is produced in, in the soldering is uh, the metallurgical type uh, and it forms the intermetallic compounds uh, at the interface means uh, the base metal reacts with the solder, met, uh, solder metal and to form the intermetallic compounds. If this intermetallic compound is formed then the strength of the joint is found good and if the reaction between and the reaction between the base metal and the solder determines the type of the compound uh, compound which will be formed and if the no compound is formed at the surface then bond strength is largely governed by the adhesion and uh, the strength if it is being determined by the adhesion then it will not be as high as that is generated by uh, the production of the intermetallic compounds at the interface. Uh, soldering metals which are commonly used uh, for the solder uh, soldering purpose are the alloys of lead in tin containing the um, uh, tin from 5 to 70 percent and lead 95 to 30 percent and the higher content of uh, uh, the uh, tin lowers the melting point which in turn increases the fluidity but uh, uh, the, the depending upon the uh, percentage of uh, um, the lead or tin or depending upon the relative amount of the lead and tin and the strength of the soldered joint and the melting point of the solder will be affected. Other soldering materials uh, which are used for soldering purposes are uh, like tin antimony solder, tin uh, silver solder, uh, lead silver solder, uh, tin zinc solder, cadmium sil uh, silver solder and uh, the forms and the fluxes which are used for the soldering purpose uh, normally solders are used in form of bars and the flux code wires. Uh, and uh, in form of sheets, foils, ribbons, space and creams. And the fluxes for soldering purposes are uh, normally uh, used in form of sodium, uh, uh, ammonium chloride, zinc chloride, rosin and rosin dissolved in alcohol. And uh, these uh, uh, fluxes used for the soldering purpose are, are classified in three groups like anorganic fluxes which are very active, organic fluxes are active and the rosin fluxes are somewhat less active. And uh, depending upon the method which is being used for uh, uh, heating the base metals to be joined by soldering, uh, there are number of soldering methods and uh, these are soldering by iron, soldering, uh, dip soldering, uh, torch soldering, oven soldering. Uh, resistance soldering, induction soldering, infrared soldering and ultrasonic soldering. Main difference in these methods lie uh, lies in, in, in the way by which heat is being generated at the fin surfaces to produce the joint and melt the solder material. Ultrasonic soldering is different from the other soldering uh, methods in the way that ultrasonic uh, energy is introduced in, in a bath uh, to produce the joint uh, successfully of the materials which are entirely different in nature like glass and aluminum combinations which, other, which are otherwise difficult to weld by other soldering methods. Here uh, when the ultrasonic energy is introduced in the bath it, uh, it, it acts just like uh, the fluxes helps to remove the impurities. And now I would like to summarize this lecture. Uh, students you have seen that uh, what is the uh, need of uh, using uh, these uh, uh, soldering, uh, brazing and uh, 
the brace welding techniques uh, because uh, many times the conventional welding techniques fails to produce uh, the desired joints and uh, you have seen that what is the uh, the principle of the brazing operation soldering operation what are the materials used for um, the brazing and soldering operations and uh, the methods which are commonly used for the brazing and soldering operations and now in the next lecture you will see that the braze welding and uh, uh, the, the, the importance of removing the, the residual uh, the fluxes from the joint which is produced. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.